Hey friends, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a wig review. This is a brand new style by Tress Allure called Undercut Bob in the color 10R. Tress Allure just came out with three new styles. I have all three and I'm reviewing them separately. This is one of them. This is a, a kind of a shorter in the back, not really A-line, but undercut, straight, heat friendly piece with a full mono top and a lace front. There are some challenges with this one, but if you're willing to work with those challenges because it is really cute, then stick around and I'll tell you everything that I know. sent me this piece so that I could show all of you. I just love doing wig reviews so that my wig sisters out there have information that they can use to make a good purchasing decision. These are high-end luxury synthetic wigs and they're not cheap and so I definitely want you to have all the details and everything that can help you know whether or not this style is for you or not. Let's take a look at this one from all sides. The fibers on this piece are outstanding. Now this is a heat friendly piece. Heat friendly wigs do need special care if they're long enough to rub up on your clothing, which this one is. And so you're gonna wanna know how to care for it to keep it in the best shape possible. I do have a video where I show you how to care for heat friendly wigs. Basically, you're gonna have to take heat to it depending on how often you wear it and how long you wear it each time you wear it will depend on how often you have to take heat. But the rubbing up on your clothing is going to cause these ends to get a little bit frayed and taking a steamer or a flat iron, not a steamer, a hot air brush or a flat iron should fix that right up if you take care of it every time you start to feel them get that way. Now let's talk about my challenges with this one. It hangs in the face something terrible. Now, because this has a full mono top, you can part this anywhere you want to part it. I have played with this constantly to find a place that I can part it that it kind of naturally wants to part so that it doesn't hang in my face. I haven't been able to find that place. So what does that mean for you? You, first of all, your piece might not hang as heavily in your face as it does in mine. One of the things to, to know about these higher end pieces is all of the monofilament up here is free parting space and it's all hand tied. So, and the, so is the lace front. So depending on how someone, you know, tied in those fibers will depend on how it lays. And so you may get a piece that doesn't hang in your face as much as this one does on me, or that has a natural parting. All of these full mono tops, while they can be parted anywhere, they usually come with a spot that it prefers to part and you do then have to work a little bit hard to get it to part somewhere else. So you might get one that doesn't hang in your face and parts exactly where you want it. But if you don't, if yours is like mine, there are a couple of things that you can do to fix that. Number one, wear it around the house a lot and the more you play with it, the more you push those fibers out of the way, you'll start to train it to go in a different direction. Because each of these fibers are hand knotted up here, you know, they can move all around on the axis of that knot. And so sometimes it's just a matter of redirecting those knots to go this direction instead of this direction. So that's one option. Another option is you can take heat to this. You can take a hot air brush and kind of, you know, round brush it back. You can take a hair dryer. You can take, um, you know, anything with heat. You can take a hot comb. A hot comb is great. And I've used hot combs on heat friendly synthetic wigs in the past to redirect like a part line. I think I have a video showing how to do that and how to get lift in the front. I'll make sure that video is linked in the description. So what I want you to know about this piece is you may have to work with it some out of the box to get it wearable for you. If you're not willing to do that, then maybe a piece like this isn't the right choice for you because a lot of straight styles like this can do that. Now, this does have a lace front, so you could take this, I'm holding it on my head right now as I brush my fingers. I mean, the fibers are so good. Look at how I can just, if this is on your head nice and secure, you could run your fingers back through this just like bio hair. But this has a full lace front, so you could while you're trying to figure out what approach you want to take with it, you could just take a clip, 
pull some of the hair down on the sides take a claw clip or a bobby a, some bobby pins or something and clip that hair up that will keep it out of your face while you're trying to determine what your best approaches to keep it out of your face when it's down that lace front is so good i mean this is a medium brown and look at how small those knots are and look at you know how it's a little thinner in some spots than the other that is a natural looking hairline in my opinion i think tressalure does a fantastic job with their hairlines and then the full monofilament on top, which I'll show you inside the cap, means that you can part this piece anywhere within that. So you can do a center part, a left part, a right part, a deep part, a shallow part. You can do whatever you want. This does have ear tabs with bendable stays. That lace front goes all the way to the ear tabs. We've got an extended nape and Velcro adjusters and Tress Allure wigs have a lot of really good stretch. I'm actually gonna cinch these in a little bit. So, Trestle or wigs run about average to average large in my opinion. I have a 22 inch circumference and I usually cinch my trestle or wigs in some. That's one of the reasons why I think this runs on the larger side of average. The other reason is because it does have a ton of stretch, really a lot of stretch. And then I do get extra cap, quite a bit of extra cap on the top of the wig, not enough to make it, you know, Lay, sit on me funny or make it uncomfortable in any way but if you have average petite head measurements trestle or wigs are probably going to fit really big on you i do have a petite over the top of my head but i have an average circumference there are tons and tons of videos on youtube showing you how to make a wig cap smaller i'll make sure uh, my other people's tips and tricks playlist is linked in the description so you can go watch some of those videos that i've bookmarked and see if maybe that's going to help you broaden the wigs available to you to consider. Now the density on this piece is a moderate density. I would say this feels like a really nice, healthy head of hair. It's not light density. It definitely has a good amount of volume. I've had higher density wigs than this with a lot more hair, but because of how kind of front heavy it is, it definitely feels like a good amount of hair. There isn't any permatease in this one, so you've got a lot, you can see when I do this, it definitely has a good amount of hair, but it doesn't have permatease. So if you get in there and you try to mess it up at the cap, you know, some people like to get in that permatease, get it big and full. You're not gonna do that with this one because while I was able to make it look fuller, that's not gonna last because it doesn't have any permatease to hold it. So if you want some more lift or volume, I would say take heat to the front and see if that gives you a little bit more lift and then you can take Tressel or Wig Wax, which is a wonderful styling spray, and that can sometimes give you a little bit more volume that might hold for a few hours. Again, between the density, the length, I just don't think you're gonna get big hair out of this one, but it really looks like a beautiful, luxurious, healthy head of Let's hair. Let's talk about this style for a moment. Undercut bob, so this is a long bob, so a lob with an undercut. And one of the things I am noticing a lot is these shorter pieces, can you see them right here? They like to come forward. And I've tried combing them, getting them out of there, and they just constantly like to come forward eventually as I'm moving around. I'm not sure what I think about that. So essentially, we've got some shorter pieces on the back side and then longer pieces in the front. And the top here actually covers up that undercut a little bit. So I'm just, and it, it is a little bit A-line. So while it's really fun and trendy, I'm just not sure what I think about those little pieces in the back wanting to come forward and peekaboo from the front. But that is another thing that might just be my piece. Maybe yours doesn't do that. Or how this wig fits me, my head shape, my head size. So, you know, how those shorter layers in the back actually lay on me. But I just wanted to point that out. It is a little different. I've never experienced that before and I can really feel it on my neck as you can see. So, Undercut Bob, I guess it's aptly named. <laughs> Let's talk about color. 10R. I'm really excited to be able to show this beautiful brunette to everybody. Now, in the description, I've read on some sites it says medium light brown. I don't really find this to be a light brown. I think it's definitely more medium. It has some dynamic 
multi-tonal uh, things going on. It's not really warm. It's, it's kind of neutral to warm, but it's not auburn. It's not like a super chocolatey brown. I'm not noticing that it's pulling any red. Now, because it says 10R, I expected it to have been rooted, but it's not. It's really consistent all the way through. We'll get outside so you can see this color outside, but I would just consider this a almost a, a mousse brown. It's not dark, it's not light, it's not heavily highlighted, it's not red, it's not chocolate. It's just a really pretty medium brown. All right, hopefully you got a good look and we'll get outside so you can see this color outside. Let me throw her on for you one more time. I, I don't really like to end this section with no wig on my head and gives you another opportunity if you're new to wig wearing to see how I put a wig on. When we're new to wig wearing, everything is terrifying. And I used to worry all the time that I was putting my wigs on incorrectly because I, nobody ever did it on video. I never could see it, which is why I make a point of doing it on video as often as I can. There we go. 10 R. Undercut Bob. Let's get outside so you can see this color outside. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you in my next All video. Right, friends, here we are. I don't think I put that down far enough. 10R outside. Get in close. can see it's just a really beautiful medium brown. You know, when you get a color like this, if you're nervous about people knowing that you're wearing wigs, getting a color that doesn't have a ton of visible highlights can be helpful because then you don't run the risk of people asking you where you get your hair colored. Not that it's not a beautiful color, but it just doesn't scream salon. And that can be helpful. All right, thanks for watching.